Today I'm showing you my version of the Sienna Maker jacket from Closet Case Patterns, the newest release in this gorgeous blue linen. And I'm also going to show you how to construct this back button vent that I find adorable. So don't miss out and stay tuned. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina. This is Lifting Pins and Needles, a channel all about sewing, limitless sewing. And I'm coming today from my backyard on a very muggy, cloudy day, but very hot. And I am in my Sally dress that I've shown you in the previous video. Just stand up so you can see it. Love it. If you haven't seen that video, you might want to check it out. This has been one of the most prettiest dresses I've made so far and it's got to do with the fabric and the style of course but that is not what I'm talking to you about today. Today I have a really in-depth review of the Sienna Maker Jacket, a new pattern released by Closet Case Patterns. Now months ago, several months ago actually, <laughs> I was invited to join and test this pattern. I got an email um, asking if I wanted to participate. So I have made the Rome collection before from Closet Case Patterns, the Pietra, Pietra Pants, the Fioresco and the Cielo top and I enjoyed making those and when I got the invitation to test I just jumped right in before even knowing what the pattern was that I was going to test. I was really pleasantly surprised when I got the file and the information. This jacket has a lot of cool features. This jacket is inspired by sort of French vintage workwear. I believe it was more male garment that was used in a whole range of occupations. Durable, made out of cotton, really thick. And over time, this has evolved into more like a unisex garment and sort of called utility wear. But the ones I've seen in the shops and in places are just really, really masculine and not my style at all. When I saw this one, that that was the inspiration and I started looking at the details, I got really excited because there are so many feminine details in this jacket. And there's just not one jacket, there's three versions in this pattern. The common features that the three have are the crisp, notched collar here that can be buttoned up to here with a snap or a button optional if you want full coverage slightly dropped shoulder and that they're all unlined i have pulled out some product pictures from their website with the models their official photos that anyone can see when you go and look at the website to show you these views i'll also be putting in some line art so you can see the features and basically views a and b differ in the length um, one is shorter than the other, they have in common that they have deep hip pockets, a hidden bust pocket inside and a self belt with D ring closures. At the back they have a slit. View A is longer and hits mid thigh and then view B is shorter and hits upper thigh. And this pattern is drafted for a woman that measures 5 foot 6. So those references to the body are taken into account with that height. View C has a different draft so it's a separate file it's not it doesn't use common pattern pieces that views A and B have and this one is cropped it has the same style of notched collar it has a single bust pocket two pockets on the side it also has a back buttoned vent and this is the feature that got me totally well there are two features of UC that got me the other one that I find really interesting is pockets here on the sleeve. So the sleeve is a two-piece sleeve, but the upper sleeve piece is composed of two pieces, well three actually, plus the lining that forms this pocket here on the side with a button. When I saw those features, the pockets here and the back button vent, that totally got me. I mean, I, I was undecided about what view to sew. Um, I was happy that as a tester I could choose what view to sew and just let them know what I was sewing and I, I chose view C. Also because view C only takes 2 meters and the other views take anywhere from 2.75 meters to 3 and you know fabric consumption is a thing for me. I like to use less fabric and actually in my stash the biggest cuts of fabric I ever have are 2 meters. And I happen to have some linen in two meters, navy blue. I am loving navy at the moment. Uh, this is navy background with flowers and I just love it. I wear navy and it just feels me. And having something solid to put on all these print things that I have that are navy uh, is a really useful component for my wardrobe. They recommend really stable medium to heavyweight wovens. 
like twill, denim, canvas and sort of heavier weight linen, not really thin linen or linen blends, like linen rayon blend would not work, it has to be like linen linen, you know. My linen I would say is a medium weight linen, it's not thin at all but it's not thickish thickish and actually I couldn't cope with thicker because it's just way too hot. <laughs> so the exciting thing about this pattern is that it's the first pattern that they released with sizes up to 30. So all the patterns in the past go from sizes US 0 to 20 but now this one goes from sizes 0 to 30 and it's in two separate drafts so two separate patterns. The pattern I tested was the one that comes from 0 to 20 and that's from a bust of 31 to 46 inches and hips of 33 to 48 inches. Now the separate pattern that comes from sizes 14 to 30 was tested by a different group. I had no involvement there at all <laughs> and the information I am telling you now I got just right now from the website when the pattern launched you know so this one is drafted for a pear shape in mind so a bigger waist to hip ratio with a d cup so high bust full bust difference of four inches and above and now the bust measurement will go up to a 58 inch and the hips up to a 61 inch and now this pattern can work for so many more people so I think that's amazing. Now in the pattern I tested I chose a size 14. I would not make a size 14 in the 14 to 30 because I'm not a D cup and I'm not a pear shape. I am a C cup so between the B and the C but considering the boxy style and the amount of positive ease on the pattern I don't need to sew a pattern that is actually drafted for a D cup when I have a smaller cup. So if you're sort of in between both these different patterns, you need to take those things into account. Body shape, cup size, to see which one is going to work. So considering everything, I chose a size 14, as I told you, and made a bright yellow muslin. My goal for making this muslin was to check for fit mainly around the collar, the neckline, the arm side to sleeve relation, how that fits, and of course the position of the shoulder. It's described as slightly dropped, but I really wanna know where it is gonna fit on my body. I don't wanna ruin my nice linen, and if I need to make any adjustments, I really wanna know. For other styles that are more fitted, I also check for waist height and that, that placement because I am short waisted, I have a short torso. But that doesn't apply for this pattern because of the positive ease. I really wasn't concerned about the fit on the body as such. I knew that was going to be fine. I just wanted to know how this area was going to fit. Because you can wear boxy styles, that is totally fine. But I think in my personal opinion, they can be boxy, but up here they have to fit really well. And that is what I wanted to check. In Up Close and So Personal, I'm going to show you my pattern pieces layer on slightly less than the recommended fabric. I'm going to show you how my muslin fits. And most importantly, I'm going to show you how to construct my favorite feature of the jacket I made, and that is the back vent. I love that, I love that so much. Actually, the slit that view A has is super more simple. It's very simple. When you look at the instructions, it's a breeze. But the one in view C is much more impactful, in my opinion. It's just a gorgeous feature. And I'm going to show you how easy that is to construct. If so far you're enjoying the content and what I'm talking about is helpful for you, please consider subscribing to this channel full of sewing by tapping on that little red thing on the screen and tapping on the bell so you get notified when a new video goes live and you don't miss out. Don't you think this is starting to There are a lot of pattern pieces, but I love these projects. That's the collar, that's the pocket that goes on the bust, the pocket that goes on the hips, part of the sleeve that has a pocket that is the back that is not cut on the fold, it's cut twice. And over here you can see more pattern pieces. I haven't placed them all in the same direction because I have navy blue linen, so it doesn't matter. That is the back facing, that is the under collar cut on the bias, that is the front, that is the front facing piece. Now they're on the edge, I just need one facing for the back vent and those are sleeve pieces. So I'm working with non-print, no nap, no direction and I've used about 180 centimeters in total which is just under the 2 meters I had. 2 meters was the recommended amount for view C so I managed to squeak it out in just under the recommended amount and I'm not cheating, everything is on the right grain line and everything's correctly placed. 
Now I'm a hot mess, that's why I'm chopping my head off. <laughs> okay, so I'm in my sewing room in my natural habitat with my yellow sienna jacket muslin on. This is a straight size 14 and I just wanted to show you the lapels. I actually sewed on one of the color pieces so that you could see how that looks in proportion to the lapel. Now, the construction of the jacket uses different seam allowances for different areas of the jacket. So for the collar and all this facing of the lapel and everything, it's 3 eighths of an inch. So when you look at it finalized, this will be slightly narrower. Now you can see that the shoulder is a little bit wider on the pattern than it would be for me. But actually this has already been corrected in the final version. So whatever I had to adjust on this muslin, which was just taken in by half an inch, Actually, the pattern has that taken in by half an inch. I suppose uh, for a lot of people, it was a bit wide on the shoulders, so it was brought slightly in. So if I were to make this again with the final pattern, I don't think I would need to bring the shoulder in just a tad. You can see the shape of the sleeve is super good. It's a two-piece sleeve, so you can see it there. And easing it in was no issue at all. Now, if I move back, you can clearly see the boxiness of the style where all that ease is around the bust, about six inches and about eight inches around the hips, but that is supposed to be like that. I have pinned it on, there is a notch there to mark the center, so I have overlapped it where it's supposed to be. But remember, this is gonna be slightly narrower here because the facing needs to be attached. And on the back, there is a vent here that is totally flapping open because I haven't put buttons on, of course, it's just a muslin. Actually, in my normal life, I wouldn't wear a jacket closed up. It's just way too hot. I would just wear it open like that. My main goal of sewing up this muslin was to check the fit on the neckline, the collar, the shoulders, and the sleeve. About the rest of the body being such a boxy fit is really forgiving, so I wasn't too worried about that. But I did want to make sure that this area was going to fit really well. So if I bring it in just a tad, it's just perfect just half an inch and actually that's how the pattern is going to be so if I make the final pattern I won't need to adjust the shoulder at all about the vent I'm going to show you now how I did that on the muslin so you can see that it's not hard at all and it's really nice what you're seeing here is my yellow muslin and specifically the center back seam now the two back pieces, the right and the left, are one pattern piece. They are cut both the same mirror images, but they are sort of finished differently in this center area for that vent that has buttons. So there is a left, I have marked that with an L. That's the left on the body, not what you're seeing there you know, on the screen, and the right. So on the left side, this is called the extension of the vent, and this gets interfaced. On the right side here, there is a facing that needs to be attached to that and the facing gets interfaced. This is the facing piece that is going to be sewn onto the right side of the jacket, onto the right part that I've just shown you. And the pattern piece has this shape. And on the pattern piece it says, cut one with the right side of the fabric up. So that is what I have there. And with that same pattern piece, you cut two interfacing pieces but both of them have to be glue up. I just cut two pieces of interfacing, put the both glue sides up, one on top of each other, and then put my pattern piece there and cut it out. So one of these is going to be fused onto the left and the other one is going to be fused onto this. Now this is the right side of the fabric that you're seeing right there. And this needs to be fused onto the wrong side of the fabric. I have made red marks there to symbolize my wrong side of the because actually the cotton I'm using is exactly the same. So one of these is going to match this shape. This is the one that has the glue to match the wrong side of the facing that will go onto the right side of the jacket. So this is really cheap interfacing used for crafts. I wouldn't use this on garment making. Now the long part of this piece, there's a short bit there and the long part there. This one needs to be folded in half an inch. So I'm just gonna fold that in and press it. So that's gonna be ready to be used. 
this facing that I've just interfaced will go on to the right. Remember that's the left, that's why there's an L there, this is the right. And so this will go right sides together with the right side of the jacket there. And that will match right there on the edge. This seam he uses 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and that is what I'm roughly pinning here to show you what it will look like when it's been sewn on. So that's the right side that's done there. Then this one is going to be folded like that. And you can see that's the side that I've already pressed half an inch inwards already before attaching this there with pins. So when you actually finish the right side here of the vent, that's how it's going to look. So I'm just going to give it a press so you can see. Okay, so I'm going to put the right side of the vent to the side and now the left side is the one that doesn't have a facing attached but will just be interfaced there. So this interfacing piece that is going to be fused onto there needs to be trimmed off on the long edge here by half an inch. So that's half an inch trimmed off of that interfacing. And this will go fused onto the left side right there, onto the wrong side of the fabric of course. Then the left side gets folded in half an inch as well. and then pressed again to match the seam there from the center and that's how that is finished right there. So that's the left done and now the right side will overlap on the inside like that. You can see on the top here how that has a raw edge there that follows the shape both on the right that has the facing on it and the left that was just folded back. It's all got the same shape there. So this from here to all the way up the top needs to be finished with whatever method you prefer. I'm just going to be surging mine and the seam from the center back needs to be pressed towards the left. That's why I've written an L there, so towards that side. So this will just be one clean finish here from the top down to there. When this is all done in further stages of the jacket this gets top stitched down from the right side of the jacket but the seam here needs to be finished before you actually attach on the collar and everything. You know I've, I've attached it because this is the muslin and I wanted to check the fit but this seam would need to be finished with whatever method you prefer before attaching the collar. I've turned the jacket on the right side so you can see what it looks like this is the left side, this is the right side. You can see how the left side overlaps onto the right side right there. The right side is the one that has the facing. The facing doesn't reach all the way to the bottom because it would be a really bulky for the hem. So then the hem is just folded once and then folded twice. And that is how that's finished at the bottom there. And the same here. Now this side is less bulky because there's no facing actually, it's just the fabric folded onto itself. So for the hem it would be folded twice like that too. Now about the buttonholes, the buttonholes are marked on the pattern to be sewn horizontally like that, three, one, two, three. But my, my machine does not like sewing buttonholes on the cross grain, they just don't come out very nice. And if I can avoid them, I do, and that's why I'm doing mine vertically on the back. On the front of the jacket, though, I will be actually doing them horizontally, just to keep the aesthetics, you know, but I know my machine is not going to like that. I only wanted to show you general construction of this vent. Um, that's why I didn't even sew that facing on. I just pinned it and then pressed it so you could see how it's done. But I think that's enough to show you how easy it is, you know, it wasn't necessary for me to actually sew that. So on the right side here, I have gone with a marker and drawn where the top stitching would go. So this center back seam was pressed towards the left, as you can see there, and with a quarter inch foot, I went and did a top stitch up to there. Now this is where the facing starts, where you have that shape on the back. That's where you pivot, and then you sew down that slant. And what I did, I stopped there, 
and I took my threads to the other side and secured it by hand on the other side. As I said, I stopped there, threw the threads back and secured it on the other side. I can't just keep sewing because then I would catch this one and then I would sew the vent closed. So once I got to that point there, I flipped all this out of the way as much as I could there, flipped the right side away and then kept sewing down to the bottom. Where I started there was exactly where I stopped and I also kept the threads there and then brought them back into the inside and secured them there by hand inside and that gave me a really neat finish. I hope that was fun to watch. Here is my gorgeous navy blue linen sienna jacket view C. I'm not sure how much you're going to be able to see from the jacket. I chose to do grey top stitching throughout and here is my collar there. Now I opted to not do the optional snap or button to close up the neck totally because it's like too hot. I can't like, I don't think it's a feature I would opt to sew on a pattern so I'm super glad it was optional. There are three buttons down the front and I mentioned you saw that I was going to do horizontal buttons on the front. It's as the pattern instructs and I'm not happy with them at all. <laughs> like I know I've tried before on other garments and whenever I do them horizontally, so just because the, the machine is sewing, you know, on the cross grain, it just doesn't do a really good job uh, compared to how nice they turn out when I do vertical ones. And that's why I decided to do vertical ones here on the back. This is the area that I've shown you where I stopped right at that point there and there's actually threads on the other side that I <laughs> secured by hand in able to get that really precise area right there and I love this I love this vent at the back it's just the favorite thing ever and I would put this on other styles I would put this on other patterns not using the same pattern pieces but actually the method I like and I've done this before it's just like you do on a skirt sort of thing <laughs> but it's open like that there you can see how it's been finished there I hope this focuses on the front the bus pocket has specific type of top stitching there that I really enjoy doing and the pockets here on the side are patch pockets I'm always for patch pockets I think they're flat they don't create bulk they create something visual that's interesting and I did do the bus pocket although I usually wouldn't but I did do it because it was a pattern test but I'm, I'm happy with it it's nice <laughs> The sleeves are amazing. They have a two-piece sleeve right there. There is a seam that has been top stitched that unites the top to the bottom sleeve or the upper and, and the sleeve. And this is the feature of the pocket here that I decided to make totally non-functional. I made the, the button hole, but then I just stitched on the button so I can't really like put things in there. The depth of the pocket is about that much, about five inches. I would say you could fit things in there, but I wouldn't want to. <laughs> and I used lining for this that I've used in like a bunch of projects, Alexandra Henry cotton with cowboys on it. And I made sure to understitch that really well and then top stitch it so that this will never pop out. I really don't want the colorful lining to like be visible on my completely navy jacket, you know? So I'm gonna turn this inside out so you can see inside. This is the collar there. What you're seeing there is upper collar and in there is the under collar. The under collar is cut on the bias. The collar was really fun to construct. I love collars. Like, you don't know how much I like sewing collars. <laughs> and the facing here covers the back and goes onto the front and all the way down. Now, the instructions give you two options. One of them is to take your facing and do a guiding stitch and then press it in 3 eighths of an inch and then top stitch everything and on the product pictures of the website you will see all that top stitching like all the way around the back all the way down the front and it also says if your fabric is too thick and bulky you can trim away that 3 eighths of an inch and bias bind instead and that is the option that I've done so it's the same <laughs> colorful bias binding. I think it's adorable. It's a nice pop-up color inside that no one's gonna see but me. 
and it's the same that has been used for the sleeve pocket lining that is peeping through there the construction of the pocket is really straightforward so the upper sleeve has two pattern pieces plus the lining so it's three pieces of components to put together to form the upper sleeve the under sleeve is the same and actually this pocket on the sleeve is also optional. <laughs> if you print out the pattern for you see, you will get normal pattern pieces like for just regular two-piece sleeves. And I think that's an option that you can have if you don't think this um, sleeve pocket is nice. But I mean, while it's not practical and it's a little bit bulky, I find it super pretty and unique and I love it. <laughs> I just think it's so cool. I would always pair a boxy style like this with a tight fitting garment underneath, whether it be jeans that are tight fitting, a pencil skirt that is tight fitting, not tight, but you know, figure hugging. <laughs> and I also have a lot of dresses. You've seen me, I love that style of close fitting dress that just hits right above the knee. And those dresses, I never just wear them out on the street like that. I don't like to show off the curves that much. I always have something on top and a boxy style is just perfect especially the length. The length I think was shortened in the final version of the pattern. It does look shorter on the line art and on the models. So maybe the pattern I made was a little bit longer, but it's still because I'm taller and I didn't adjust. I think it hits like high hip and I, I like that length, especially for tight fitting dresses. Here I am at the front of the house with my jacket and my Jessica dress, you know, that I adapted. You can see the length where it hits really well there at the high hip. I think I need definition in the hips for my body shape. You can see at the back, the back vent with the buttons and the amount of ease this jacket has. The sleeve length is perfect for me, giving you a little peep of the bice binding and up close you can see how boxy it is, how loose. But I think it goes well, always with tight fitting garments underneath. Another look there of the back and the pocket on the sleeve. The shoulders fit really well. You saw I had to do a small adjustment and there is that gorgeous pocket on the sleeve on both sides. It's not functional, but I love it. A little bit of facing with bias binding. You can see the bust pocket there up close and the collar. The collar lays so nicely. It just lies super well on the body and I just love this jacket. I really like it. I'm super inspired now that I see the other views. Um, with the model pictures on the website, I think I would definitely like to make the other views. I would just have to prepare and actually just look for the right fabric. I would love to make a denim style one. A denim version would be amazing. I hope you found this review useful plus the tips of the back vent if you decide to sew that version. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon in the next video. Bye!